When I have to do a combination of engine work and fabrication, it turns my shop into an absolute disaster. And this week is not gonna be any different. We're gonna start with buttoning up some engine work, and then we've gotta figure out some basic fab as far as where are we gonna mount the engine and transmission. We're gonna do some demo. It's gonna be a mess, but I'm hoping that by the end of the week, I'll have an idea of exactly how I want to mount everything in this chassis. This waxy piece of paper is something I recommend to every single person watching this video. And I've, I've linked this in the Amazon shopping cart before, but this is a sheet that gives you torque specs based on bolt grade and bolt size. And why is this important? Well, I have a, I've got a poster on the wall over there that's all the BRM torque specs, and it's worked on everything up to now because it was all Volkswagen stuff. Now, we're gonna be adapting to Jeep stuff, so I can't use the factory Volkswagen spec for the flywheel because those are stretch bolts and we're not using stretch bolts. We're gonna have to use some aftermarket hardware. So this adapter goes here. The bolts are very important to torque to a spec that's gonna be appropriate. And the hardware, after using my thread checker, I've discovered is M10 and on the back of this bolt, it says 12.9. By the way, I will link this and that sheet in an Amazon shopping cart. The silver side is all standard sizes. The black is all metric and I use this thing all the time. So now we can pull out our sheet. We can go to the metric side, go down here to class 12.9, metric fine, go to M10, scooch over here, and we're at 71 Newton meters. So I'll probably do 70 Newton meters. We'll use a little bit of blue Loctite, which I highly, highly recommend on bolts like this because you can't see them when they loosen up and it's really hard to retighten them. Um, and before we do all that, I actually need to where is it? I need to lock down the crank to make it easier for us to apply accurate torque. We're gonna use an adapter plate from Whitbird Performance in order to marry two very different platforms together. We've got a Volkswagen diesel engine and a Jeep transmission. This kit comes with all the hardware, even the starter, so we are all good to go and we have everything that we need. For the clutch setup, we're gonna use a Center Force clutch. I prefer Center Force um, over many other brands for one main reason. It applies extra clamping force with higher RPM. So as your RPMs go up, so does the clamping force because it has these little special weights that apply more pressure as it spins faster. It's, it's a really ingenious design. And as far as I know, they're the only ones that offer it. Couple that with a high inertia flywheel and we've got an amazing recipe for smooth clutch performance and really good holding capacity. Unfortunately, I'm gonna need to cut out a ton of transmission tunnel in order to fit this transmission into such a small body. And before we get to that step, I have to clearance just a little bit to make sure that the starter has room to engage and disengage. And with the Cody Belt kit, I had to cut a really big section out for the starter, but for this kit, it's really just a little bit of clearancing with the die grinder and it's not that big of a deal. Having the ability to basically remove the entire engine bay and then reinstall it whenever I want sure makes it easy to locate stuff like this. I mean, I'm able to swing the engine in and out super easily. And as you're gonna see, it just, there's multiple times where I clip it back on and pull it back off and it's a really simple procedure. Right now, I'm feeling like this was a really good decision, but we'll see once we start to box everything in in the future. To be super clear, I do not recommend that you hang a transmission with a bunch of ratchet straps, but I don't have the right stuff to do this, and I felt safe doing this in my own shop and taking my own risk. Again, I do not recommend that you do this, but this worked out really well for me, and there has been lots of times in the past where 
Sometimes I won't do the safest thing that you can do just because I don't have all the right equipment yet. And this is one of those times where I was just being flexible because I need to get the job done. This transmission cross member is gonna be super, super important because, because it's high, it's not gonna take impacts, right? Meaning it's worth taking the time to make super solid and making it like really difficult to remove because like this lower cross member is great. It's structural and all that, but it's low enough that it's gonna be getting hit by rocks and everything. So long-term we're gonna have to chop it out. I don't wanna add a bunch of gusseting and stuff to this because it's gonna make it a nightmare to replace. But this transmission cross member, if we get it right and it's set up correctly, we can add gussets. We can do some stuff to really make this just a crazy solid anchor point between this frame rail and that frame rail. But I have to build it in a way that it's gonna accommodate our drive shaft on the passenger side, or sorry, on the driver's side and our exhaust on the passenger side. So I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do this. I know that I want it behind the transmission for sure so that I can drop the engine and transmission in together. Um, I just need to start bending tubes so I can figure out exactly how I want this to go. This Unimog front axle is a nightmare to package. And because we're using weird axles, it's going to make it to where we're going to have a bunch of really weird things to accommodate. For one, I did move the engine and transmission over to the passenger side by about an inch, maybe just like an inch and a quarter, somewhere in there. And another thing that's going to be hard to package is the transfer case. We're going to have to really clock this thing in order to in order to make it to where our drive shaft is gonna be able to be centered somewhat with the front axle, and man, it's gonna make for some goofy cross members. I have a couple different designs in mind, but I won't know which one's gonna work until I build both and just see which one packages better. Digging around a little bit in the shop, I did find the old BRM alternator bracket. Well, it's like, it's alternator and it's the whole accessory bracket really. But there's a few things that are missing. We're definitely gonna have to still design our own drive assembly, but I would be a fool not to take advantage of one solid anchor point to start with. And then we'll just have to build bracketry to support the other stuff we wanna add. Packaging engine mounts on this side is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna use the rubber mounts that were on the Passat, and these are great, they're oil filled. These are definitely gonna be great for the rubber side of things. Now for the actual steel side of things, I've got a plate that I bent and that we're gonna weld in right here, but on the engine side, it's gonna get tricky, man. I mean, as you can see, we eliminated a bunch of holes that were possible locations to mount a plate. Uh, whenever we bolted on this alternator bracket. So I'm gonna try to repurpose two of these holes and make it to where I can thread our engine mount through this bracket. 
And then we do have two open holes down here. There's one that's up here, but I don't think I can use it because this electrical connection is so close that I think that if this, if this has a bolt on it, I don't think that I'm gonna be able to get the electrical connection on and off. So this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but the plan is build some sort of a plate on here, come straight across and drop down right on top of a rubber mount. The plan is to use some quarter inch steel in this mount, but most of it's gonna be 3 16 I find 3 16 to just be such a nice compromise where you can save a little bit of weight, but it's still like so much stronger than eight. So that's what I chose to use for the bulk of this mount. But the real strength is gonna come from the shape and how everything is designed and the gusseting. And man, this is gonna be a tough one to do, but I'm just gonna cut up a bunch of cardboard and see what we can come up with. months ago, I got an upgrade in the mail from Evolution for my saw. I love the old saw. I used it for the last few years and it's been amazing, but this new compound miter can cut bigger pieces of steel. And I do buy a lot of like six inch plate steel. So it's pretty rad that you can cut it with a saw like this and get so many cuts out of one blade. So for everybody that's been asking me about it, yes, it's awesome. And I absolutely love it. This is what the engine mount looked like in the TJ when I pulled it. These are like Chineseium engine mounts that came with the Cody built kit that I bought to uh, do the TDI swap. They did not last, obviously. And you know, we're only talking like, I don't know, 15K I would guess that I had on that setup. <laughs> so that's not good. I'm hoping that the Volkswagen part, I imagine it would, is gonna do a lot better. It's a similar concept, it's just a stud by stud, but it's a heavy duty, it says made in England, so it's an English made um, part for Volkswagen Audi. And I haven't heard of these coming apart in that way, but I guess we'll see. In any case, I, I often make decisions as I'm fabricating based on past experiences. And when you see something like this that just falls apart, this scared the crap out of me when I pulled this because I was like, man, if that engine was just flopping around in the bay, like if I hit a bump and it just went up and over this little metal button, um, the amount of damage it would cause would be insane. So I built, I built this mount in the way that I built it for a few different reasons. One, we had to go in front of our fuel filter housing, in front of our dipstick, underneath our, our cooling, um, this like coolant connection, and then behind the alternator. And then I'm likely going to be putting something down here. I haven't decided yet. But in any case, where we had to mount to the block was like that narrow. Um, ugh, we really had our hands tied behind our back. But I wanted to build this piece that goes all the way around for two reasons. One, if this fails completely, I'm hoping that this will help kind of like encapsulate that failure 
so it'll keep the engine from moving too far. But two, this is gonna make it a lot more rigid and this needs to be super, super rigid. Diesel engines, I've owned six different, di or sorry, 16 diesel vehicles. And one thing that I know for sure is that diesel engines will find the weak point. They will find that bolt they didn't tighten to, like didn't tighten to spec. They will find the weak engine mounts that you built in your shop. This is built out of 3 16 I gusseted it in as many places that I could. And uh, I think that we're gonna be okay. But you see what I'm saying. This is what inspired such a goofy looking monstrosity. The other side is gonna be a lot different. For those of you that have never built an engine mount, you kind of want it, usually it's like triangular. So it'll be nice and wide on the block somewhere um, in order to keep there from being like too much leverage on any one point, making it really strong. And then it'll taper down and set like right on top of your mount or you know on top of a mount like this with two studs, whatever the mount looks like. But we just didn't have that flexibility. So <laughs> this is what we get. I imagine there'll be some small changes. I might have to like cut a hole once I figure out what uh, cooling hose I'm doing. I might have to like notch that for the cooling hose connection. I don't know. But in any case, um, <laughs> this week was a huge week. Behind the scenes, I made a ton of huge decisions for like master cylinder, brake booster, pedal assembly, like all that stuff. Got it all ordered. So next week, I'm hoping to finish the front end, but I can't completely finish it until we mount a pedal assembly so I know exactly where I can like add triangulation into the body. So there's a few things that we have to get figured out next week in order for us to move on and do exactly what I want. So for now, I need to go in and edit. And then tomorrow morning while you're watching this, I'm gonna come finish that other motor mount, get started on next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.